one. And there we go. We are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name's John. I also go by Black Mage. I'm a men's mental health advocate, father of three, U.S. Army veteran and childhood trauma survivor. And uh, I'm on a mission to help improve the conversation around mental health in general with a particular focus on men. And I'm um, doing that by bringing you interesting voices and people that I've had a chance to, to get to know uh, through the course of my life. And one of those very interesting people that I'm bringing you today is my buddy, Rudy. Um, and so, hey, Rudy, everyone. thank you so much for, for joining us. Just to give of um, kind of a quick introduction um, as to, to what Ru Rudy is, the reason why, the main reason why um, I wanted to bring Rudy on the show today is because he is a teacher. Um, he works in B through six education. Is that is that what you had in your notes here? Yep, that's right. I, I'm in fifth grade, but yes, anywhere from that range. Okay. And so he's in, uh, basically that's elementary school, right? Um, yep. As far as the ages go. Uh, and he's a great guy that I've known for years. Um, and so not only, you know, because my focus is mental health with a particular focus on men, I wanted to talk about, you know, your experience, Rudy, as a sure. teacher and, and specifically as a male teacher and what you see sure. in young men, uh, not only in the field of teaching as a male teacher, because that's a right. predominantly female dominated, domi <laughs> uh, dominated industry, um, but not only what you see in that as a educator yourself, but then also in the young men um, specifically that you educate along with the, with the young girls as well. Um, of course. along with that though, before I let you kind of dive into all of that, uh, Rudy is also just a wonderful, um, father and husband. Um, he's Thank also you. a pretty big nerd. Uh, that's, that, that's for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we've known each other primarily over the years is through a connection through as so many of my guests, uh, that seems to be the case early on, um, through a connection to video <laughs> games and nerd culture in general, um, I'd say just along with Jesse, who I've had on the show, I've had a, a few people who are mutual friends of both of ours. Definitely. On, yep. And it's been, you know, over 10 years for a lot of these relationships at this point. Right. So crazy. It's been that long. It's nuts. It really is. <laughs> it is crazy. Um, so Rudy, at this point, you know, I, I would love to pick your brain about a variety of subjects at first though. Um, let me go ahead and give you a chance to introduce yourself to everybody. Tell everyone sure. a little bit about yourself. Um, and then, you know, what you do, interest, hobby, you know, all, all that. And then specifically, though, what I want you to touch on is also why the topic of mental health and men's mental health in particular kind of stood out to you and why you basically said yes to, to joining me today. Sure, sure. So for, first of all, thanks for having me. I, I love doing stuff like this, especially with people who I've this sort of it's been so interesting the last 10 years before that I probably never had so many online quote unquote friends who have become mm -hmm. like real friends that I like talking to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so thanks for having me. But yeah, so I my name is Rudy, like John mm -hmm. said, um, I'm 30. Well, I'm about to be 34 years old. So I'm a uh, it's funny, because a lot of my friends are a little bit on the younger side. So I end up I like talking to people like John and Jesse, because you kind of I feel honestly like a didn't little... realize I was that much older than you. I thought we were all in the same age. Grade. <laughs> you just made me feel older. I'm like, I was gonna, gonna say this always this always happens to me. I'm stuck somewhere in the middle, man. Too young, too old. I'm in the middle somewhere. I've known you so, for ten. Uh, I don't think I've ever asked your age. Fucking hell, I didn't realize you were I, Okay. I guess it never came up. I don't know. But yeah, um, never did, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've known I've known John and a bunch of these guys who have been on for a long time just because uh, you know, we I used to I've always used Facebook forever for like you know, many, many years since it first started, but it wasn't until I discovered these gaming groups where I felt like, wow, these are my people, you know, I can really, and it wasn't even like we talk about games all the time. It was just a cool place where you felt like you could kind of, you know, share whatever you wanted and people would reciprocate and we'd have these great discussions, you know? Um, so yeah, so that's, that's where, where I first met all you guys. But um, for more present day, I'd say the reason why I wanted to come on so bad is because in my job as a teacher, especially in, in <clears throat> let's say, a, a female-dominated space, it's a little different than, than what you're used to, I'd say, in, in general, in most workplaces, you know? It's very much, I don't, have a, I don't have any issue working in that field. It's just, it's quite the experience, I will say. You know, it's, um, there's a lot of times where I kind of try to explain how being a male in this space, how important it is and how effective it is. And these girls and these boys who have no father at home um, or these young boys mm -hmm. who, you know, the area I teach in is like, you know, the hood, you know? So these kids who grow up in that area and they have a certain idea in their head of how they want to be. And I'm like, listen, I try to explain my own story to them about like, 
you know, we grew up in a rough area. We moved out. My brothers were in all sorts of trouble and I kind of made something different of my life, you know, and I feel very happy with how things turned out. And I try to show them there's a better path, you know, and I feel that a lot of times I just get shut down because you're the guy, you know, it's mm -hmm. very commonplace in my, in my job to have, let's say disparaging comments about males or they're not smart or they're lazy or they're doing, you know, and I, because of the way I am, I kind of let it roll off my back, but I definitely observe. I mean, you never pick your battles. I think that's just, uh, that's just smart. If you got to get through your day, right? You can't, of you can't course. sit yep. there have, debating every person who says something <laughs> that you don't agree yeah. with. You, you got you, work to do. <laughs> you'd lose your mind, but yeah. it is, it is an interesting to, thing to notice, you know? And so I, I guess uh, even if it's unofficially, I've very much been a big advocate of, you know, I'd say, I, I I don't like the image that a lot of guys have or they portray. So I've I've for many years been unofficially fighting to improve that image. And, and mm. what I do and even what people say, maybe clearing things up about it's not always like that. A lot of us do this or a lot of, you know, so I find that very important. And that's, I guess, and the main reason. I mean, um, you said a lot of things that I kind of wanted to hit on there. Sure. But um, one that just really stands out for you, because. It seems like you might be talking about something that I've discussed on the show and had some some discussion with other guests before, which is, are you, are you kind of referring to redefining what it means to be a man or what masculinity even means? Because I, I think where, where I feel like you're going with that is, unfortunately, we're letting toxic men define masculinity, which is where some of these yeah. problems with it are, because so many of us who maybe have a more positive outlook on what it means to be a man, we don't speak up. Um, yeah, and, and yep. it sounds like, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. Is that what you're getting at? Like more of us yeah. keeping up on what it means to be a positive male role model. You know what, now that you, you put it in that way. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense to what, to what I'm trying to get across, I guess, you know, um, I feel like guys could do a lot better of a job of portraying what you should actually be like and what we actually do every day, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's well, where I'm it, it, doesn't that come with some responsibility on us to step up and, and, and do it, though? Oh, that, yeah, that's totally. What, I, there's a quote that I <laughs> um, that I love and I can't remember who it's by, but it's basically something along the lines of the problem with the world is that um, the, the dumb people or stupid people are full of confidence and <laughs> the wise people are full of doubt. Um, and, so and you know, it, it's we're letting the conversation be dominated by, you know, people who are putting out negative messaging and negative images around men. And I think there are a lot of men out there doing amazing things who have sure. amazing, like yourself, who have amazing, um, you know, influence as far as a positive male role model, but you're doing it silently. You're do you're, you're out there teaching and influencing <laughs> every day. You're not concerned with, you know, lecturing people on social media um and you never have been but maybe it is time for more voices to kind of stand up and, and do that right i think you're i think you're absolutely right and you know and and occasionally i'll kind of like dip my toes into that water a little bit and throw something out there it, it, we've been friends on facebook for a long time so i'm sure you've seen occasionally mm -hmm. i'll throw a little comment out there or a little status or something and someone will go back and forth so yes i'd like to get more comfortable doing it. and i have you know over the years i've kind of become i've always been a confident person but in that aspect I feel like I have a lot to say that I can back up. Like, it's not a dumb, I feel like I could go into this confident that I could convince you that it's not all what it seems and that there are guys who need to step it up. Yes, a hundred percent. But that there's plenty of people out there doing what they're supposed to do as a guy, you know? It shouldn't be like, hey, you're babysitting today. No, these are my kids. I'm, I'm raising <laughs> I them, you know? Remember that do you remember? Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> specifically that you commented on on social media. Sure. Um, and I remember there being you know, for real dads who've been involved, like that is, a, that is a very offensive, like, sure. but, and I don't want to be like, oh yeah, like I'm fuming over here at somebody oh, who no, says no, no. it, but you know, it was just like this idea that staying home with your children as, a, <laughs> as an involved father is babysitting. <laughs> it's like, it's so weird to a, a, for a dad who's actually involved. Day -day. And you have been. Tell, tell us a little bit sure. more about your family. Yes, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Wonderful. I skipped over yeah. that. So, so I, um, it's my, it's my fault. It's my job. I'm the oh, it's all good, man. <laughs> so yeah, so I've um I've been to so I mentioned that I'm about to be 34. I've been with my wife since I was 17 years old. Like it's been, I mean, literally half of my life, you know. Yeah. So so we've been together. Uh, we were dating shout out, for, yeah. Shout out, shout out. <laughs> we were together for 
about nine years or excuse me, 11 years. And then we, we got engaged. Now we were so young, obviously. So, you know, no one trying to get out, out here, get engaged at 17 years old. Um, <laughs> and we got engaged and then we got married and, and we've been married ever since then. So total 17 years. And we have uh, two kids. Um, I have a daughter that's nine years old. Um, and my son is about to be five. So, you wow. know, things are great. I feel very, very fortunate and very blessed to be in the situation that I'm in, you know, and um, I try to always look at it like that. Like, you know, don't focus on the negatives. I know it's like a cliche, but honestly, I try to really just focus on the positive things in my life and and carry that to even to work, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, and I love that, you know, you spread that positivity. I don't think that you should dive into, you know, fighting the entire internet and, and every <laughs> negative comment out there, but I do love that you share your voice and, and you share it in a positive way. Um, let me go back. So you, you've been a dad now for nine years. Um, yep. right. Uh, and so how long have you been a teacher? So I've been a teacher for, I'm wrapping up my fifth year. Fifth year as a teacher. Yep. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and so weird. Uh, Rudy, um, you mentioned earlier, like the, the whole online friendship and, and, you know, sure. kind of the dynamics of that. I'm actually going to have uh, a young man on, he's going to be returning. Uh, his name is Judah. Um, I had him on a couple of weeks ago to discuss things in general, but uh, he did a series on the loneliness epidemic and different types of friendship. And, and one of the videos that he made that he focused on was parasocial um, friendship ah, and basically these online friendships. So I'm going to be having him on. I would highly suggest you watch that because a lot I'll of check it out. relationships are going yeah. to come up and we'll have those uh, discussions. I will say it's, it's very weird because I have known you since... Before you were a teacher and before either one of you. That's, that's true. That's true. Wow. Kind of crazy when you put it that way. Yeah. And all digitally, right? I think this might be the longest we've ever actually spoken on video. Sure, sure. That's, that's you mean. know, that, that blows my, wow. Now that you put it that way, it's so crazy to think that I've known a few of you guys since before I was even a dad, before I was even a teacher. So much that defines my life. I remember life when your now, kids you know? were born. Yeah. I remember when your kids so, were born. I remember so when you first started working as a teacher, the post yeah. Yep. How excited you were about it. And that's so oh, crazy. That's awesome. so we're going to discuss those relationships on, on that future thing. What I wanted to ask cool. you, yeah. I remember when you, you were so excited and everything that you mentioned about becoming a teacher, sure. um, you know, it was so inspiring. I think a lot of, a lot of us out there have a respect for teachers. We all, I think everybody who's been through, you know, the public education system, of course, can remember a teacher at least that course, they love, yeah. right? And so we all have a respect for for great teachers, especially. What brought on that desire to educate? Where where did that come from? And yeah. um, you know, especially as a man, you know, I, I feel like that there's a reason why it's female dominated. A lot of men sure. don't feel like that's the appropriate industry for them. Sure. What brought on that desire and the courage to go ahead and do actually do it? Yeah. So. That's a good question. So basically, uh, when I was, let's say it's almost 10 years ago now. So, you know, I was like 23, 24 years old. I was just, um, my daughter was almost born. Like my wife was pregnant. Right. And I was looking for something new. I, I think I was working at target at the time, like for, you know, pet peanuts, you know, eight, eight bucks an hour or something like that. And I was living I think at I home. remember pictures of you and your target. Fucking probably, you. probably. Yeah. I was doing security. Right. So, so I remember thinking like, okay, like I'm going to have a kid soon. And like, I gotta, I could take the easy way out and be like, be at home with my parents and they'll, they'll help me out. And, but I was like, nah, I kind of want something, you know, this is, I'm in a serious relationship now. Um, I kind of want to do something more with my life. So I found this place. Um, it was, it was in town. Someone had told me about it. It was called Anderson center for autism. It was almost <laughs> like a, um, Think of like a college campus kind of set up a bunch of buildings in this campus and all the buildings have uh, these kids ranging from, let's say, as young as maybe seven, eight years old, all the way up to when they're 21 years old, they like graduate out of the program mm. and 99% of them have autism. There's some, some anomalies there, but almost all of them, different varying levels of autism. So it basically goes K through high school? Y pretty much. Uh, oh, wow. the, kids I, the kids I worked with. And again, it's, there's a school on the campus as well that they attend Monday through Friday, but they, mm -hmm. they walk back right to their, um, their buildings. Like they live there, you know, that's like their mm -hmm. home. Oh, and wow. so, yeah, it's really interesting. And they have, uh, workers who round the clock first, second, third shift, you know, they're there, they take care of them. They work with them. Um, you have like the kids have goals that they have to accomplish. So it could be something as simple as, uh, John has to brush his teeth every night independently. 
and you work your way up to John has to brush his teeth and use mouthwash and take a shower all independently, right? It's like a goal thing you kind of work on with them. And so you help them with their daily living activities. Um, you know, you help them depending on the kid with their, um, do they need help even taking a shower, using the bathroom, getting cleaned up, eating food, whatever it is, right? You just kind of help them through their day. And obviously you form relationships with the kids. You really grow to care about them and love them and stuff. And so, so I had heard about this place and I applied and I got the job and I started and, um, I worked there for five years and I learned so much in that place. Um, not only about, you know, autism in general, but just, just this is the first time I had ever dealt with kids, um, in that fashion, you know, taking care. Hmm. I never had kids of my own. I didn't have a lot of nieces or nephews or anything like that. So this was the first time I kind of got to experience that, you know, and, and, and when I did, I, I really started to love it a lot. Um, I just loved how rewarding it was to see, oh, oh, Rudy, you're back. I'd walk in for my shift. Oh, Rudy, oh, you're going to hang out with me tonight? You're going to play games with me tonight? You're going to watch a movie? Whatever it was. You know, it was so There's cool. nothing I, like I a kid it. being excited yeah, to see Yeah, yeah. I only know it as a father. Sure. Um, and as an older cousin in some cases. Sure, but sure, sure. It's very, it's very cool to have a kid excited to see you again. <laughs> no, it was, it was a great feeling, and I, and I loved it. I craved more of that. So after about four or five years um, – I started thinking like, you know, I had graduated from, from with my bachelor's degree, but it was something totally different. It was in criminal justice. I wanted to, to my goal was to be like, like um, some sort of law enforcement, but like a, on a federal level. Like I really wanted to do that. I want to be in the FBI or DEA or something like that. Hmm. So that was my goal, right? I was like taking, you know, those tests, like the, the physical exams and the interviews and the psychological exam, polygraphs, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. so doing the all, it was like every few months I'd do it and I'd always run into some sort of roadblock. The physical part, no problem. The interview part, no problem. It was something with me whenever I would take either a psychological exam or a polygraph, it would never go right for me. It'd either come back really? inconclusive. Yeah, I don't know what the deal was with, with me or what, but it was either come back inconclusive on the um, polygraph or my psychological exam would come back, not the right profile, whatever that means. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I was getting very frustrated. I'm like, man, I want to do this so bad and I'm not a quitter, but I don't understand what's happening. It's not going anywhere. So after about, you know, four years or so of trying and trying, I'm like thinking to myself, like, well, what else can I do? Like, well, I really like this job I have now. I really like working with kids. Like, maybe I should go back to school. And it was very hard for me to commit to that because remember, at this point, I have a kid already. Um, I have another kid. Oh, no, actually, that was after I finished. This was 2016. I have a mm -hmm. kid already who's a few years old. Uh, you know, my wife's working. I'm working. I'm working. Um, like overnight at this point too, right? Like go in yeah. at 10, come in at eight in the morning. And so I was thinking like- At the autism center? At same place, yep, yep. Yeah. And so I was thinking, you know, like I really want to go back to school and I think I want to try to get into education. And so, uh, you know, I looked into it. I looked at the cost and everything, the time. I was like, I was like, all right, I can do this. I'll, um, I'll talk to my manager, you know, she'll work with me. We'll make it work. And so, so that's what I did for the next year and a half. I did, um, you know, I'd, I'd like work overnight. I'd come home, sleep for a few hours, go to class, you know, wow. eat some food, come home, do it again, right? And I already oh, thought- wow. also squeezing in time for video games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somehow, I got to look at the games from that year and see what I played that year. Because man, somehow, somehow, yeah, sacrificing sleep, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, so I did that for like a year and a half. And then my final semester, I was, I was like, oh my God, I'm so close. Like, I'm going to be a teacher. This is crazy. Um, I had to do student teaching, right? And so that required me to actually go into a classroom eight in the morning, spend the whole day there, work with the teacher, you know, do lessons, whatever it was, just kind of be there with her all day and, um, and, I, and get out at like four o'clock. So I'm thinking like, <clears throat> how am I going to do this? I can't, I can't like all the other people in my class are younger than me. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to take time off from work and I'll do it. I'm like, well, I can't really afford to do that. I got kids in an apartment. I, you know, what am I supposed to do? So, uh, so what ended up happening, and I still to this day don't even know how I pulled this off, but I'm glad I did, is I would go in at 10 o'clock at night. I'd like do all the things I had to do, you know, the laundry, clean up the house, take it, make sure the kids are good, check their rooms, whatever. And I'd like find a few hours to get some shut eye in there, two, three hours, just knock out mm -hmm. for a few hours, pop back up at like four in the morning, get ready, and then go sh straight to school. And I did it every day for like, I don't know, maybe like, two or three months or something. It was the hardest time in my life, honestly. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh my God. It was so crazy. And, um, and yeah, and yeah, so, so I did the whole thing. And you and did it all on your own. See, I could only accomplish own, yeah. that kind of thing when I had a drill sergeant who <laughs> didn't give me a choice. 
<laughs> right, right. And, it's this or nothing. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it just on my own willpower. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, but after listening to your video, it's it's interesting to see how how different people react to stuff like that. You know, because mm -hmm. I feel like for me, it might even have the opposite effect. Maybe I have a harder time with someone on you like that. You know, versus like me trying to push myself to do it, but. I don't know. It's just interesting. Well, how that, that, that actually that. brings me back to, to one question that kind of came up while you were kind of explaining your, sure. your journey towards being. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. You can interrupt me. Anytime. No, I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, we talked about this beforehand. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's nice. It's a nice change of pace. Um, and so one thing that kind of came up was sure. you mentioned the the testing. And I remember so I passed my I had a polygraph in order to join <clears throat> um, the military because it was a top secret um, sure. position. Um, and I, I did fine with all the testing and everything. I wonder if knowing you, yeah. um, if one of the problems that may have came up is that you're almost too empathetic, I, um, for, I for some of the, right. because one of the things that stands out to me is for one, how different those two career fields are from, yeah. from, uh, from pursuing a career in law enforcement to then going into teaching, yep. like they're very it's funny because they're very similar and very different because <laughs> yeah. law enforcement military you know anything government agency type work um you know there is a level of empathy that you have to have but there's also a level of rigidness that you have to have sure. and rule following and by the book and there are no exceptions and you know i feel like to be a teacher it takes yeah. a certain level of empathy that may that may almost make those opposites. I wonder if that's where you kind of ran into a little bit of an issue, because I, I will tell you, there, there was no drill sergeant that I ever ran into that asked me when I didn't get up on time. Oh, well, what happened last night? Well, is there a reason why you didn't? No, they don't give a fuck. It's their job to give a fuck. Um, I, feel, I feel like maybe that's that's why you ran into a problem. And maybe you went into the direction that you were supposed to be in, because Teaching yeah. from an outside perspective requires a level of empathy that I think most people don't have, but especially men tend to seem to struggle with. Yeah, no, you know what? I, I think you're probably right on the money on that. <clears throat> I think I, you know, I'm, I'm a big overthinker sometimes. Not, it's so weird because a lot of things I'm fine and other people are overthinking. It's just specific things that are like serious things that I start going down the whole rabbit hole. Like, you know, the, the, I remember the police officer would ask me a question and I would like, well, did I? Hold on. Maybe that was that one time. <laughs> hey, how many times did you do that? How many times did you drink alcohol underage? Have you ever saw? I, I remember being asked how many times you've stolen office supplies. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, like trying to remember, like, does the pen count? Oh like <laughs> my God. I, you know, I think that's what it was, honestly. But you know what? I'm so glad. Listen, more power to the people who go into that field. But for me, mm -hmm. I couldn't be happier with the way uh, things turned out. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I think that you're, you're totally on the, on the money too with, um, in terms of describing how it is day to day, right? There are so many times as a guy where I think I've just developed the patients from where I worked in, in the Anderson Center, my mm -hmm. own kids, and now these kids at school. And I kind of, I could never work, like where I live, for example, it's very much a richer, nicer area for the kids. And I don't think I could ever work in a place like that. I just don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm as needed in a place like that. You know what I mean? As a mm -hmm. guy, as a, uh, finally a teacher who's not a white woman that's what all these kids have their whole elementary you in know these more privileged areas right, right? Yeah, it's, yeah it's cool when i walk into school with the jordans on and i know their references and they like think it's so cool and they relate to me so much more you know and and whether that's fair or not i feel like i have just uh, an automatic um handicap on everyone and, else and you know and that's a great point and that's that's one of the things that i want to kind of address with this channel is you know i do think that there is you know, there are differences in, in the role models. And, and I had an interview that just got released um, the last one today sure. um, with a therapist. Uh, he focused he focuses on men. And we talked about, you know, the lack of positive male role models for young men in a lot of cases. Sure. And we're a lot of us are out there who didn't have them or out there seeking them and not not being able to find them as easily as we can find positive motherly figures and that's not a slight to women that's actually a compliment like it's yeah. very easy to find a motherly oh sure figure. like because women are are just they're out there in droves with support and love and and all of that it's much more difficult it seems to find a male positive role model 
in, yeah. in today's society. What are, are you seeing that in the education system? You, you kind of already hit on that. Where are, are we still lacking from what you're seeing? Because it sounds like those kids, especially, you know, young men, maybe sure. even young, young girls too, because they want yeah. a, a masculine oh, of uh, figure to look up to as well. Um, are we lacking that? And is that something that you're seeing that, that there's a craving for in education from, from the children? Sure. Yeah. I, I think a hundred percent, we're definitely lacking it. I can't say it's any one particular person's fault. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, when you have someone come apply to a school like this and they have the right certifications and credentials and they're a male, I'd say the chances are pretty good. You might get it, especially in elementary school, just because again, if I think of all the classroom teachers in my, in my actual building, I think there's maybe three or four of us, honestly. There's like some teachers that teach gym or music who are males too. Still only a few. I'd say total is probably like less than 12 males in the whole building, you know? And um, we all know that there are plenty of female teachers who do a great job. We know that. It's just, it's nice to have the balance there because there's things that you can only get from a female teacher and there's things you can only get from a male teacher. When the boys come in and they're saying inappropriate things about a girl and they're treating them the wrong way, yeah, of course they can talk to like my partner, for example, who's a female and she might give them some great advice, but it's different when I pull them aside. I'm like, listen, as, as a guy, let's talk about this. And it's just, it's just a different thing. You know, there, there's and, a level of understanding there. Right, there it's empathy right. versus sympathy. Like, um, and, and you, you made a great point that I, that I want to make sure I go back to and highlight, which is, this isn't about blame. And, 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 no, no, no. and thank you so much for saying that because I don't want this conversation to come off as if, the problem are female teachers. No, no, not at or all. The problem is schools not hiring men. Um, I think where where it really comes back to, and I'd love to get your perspective on this, sure. uh, is something that I've shared multiple times on my channel, which is this isn't an everybody else problem. This is a men's problem that we need to fix. We exactly. need. It sounds like we need more men to step up. The schools are willing to hire. Sure. The male teachers, the uh, the female teachers are more than willing to welcome male teachers into yep. the fold. It's not their fault that it's a female dominated industry. It's ours because we don't pursue it and we're yep. not looking to to do that work and guide that next generation. And no, so that's exactly it. And, and so for one, I'd like you to for one, expand on that thought. And then, you know, if you do agree with it, you know, what would your message be to men? Because not only am I trying to help men, but for the, for those of us who are of a certain age and ready to step up and take responsibility, I want to inspire men to stop passing it off on everybody else as if it's everybody else's fault. It's not women's <laughs> yeah. fault. It's not the school system's fault. All right. If you ever had the drive to be a teacher, go do it. What are you waiting yep. for? Yep. We'll solve the problem. I go couldn't ahead. agree. I couldn't agree more with you, honestly. That That's why I find it so important to try to you know, do what I can to, to, to change it, to change the way things are and explain to guys. I have guy friends who they say they're very smart, intelligent people, and they like passing their knowledge off to other adults. But they're for some, for some reason, I feel like there's this idea that you can't do the same with a young kid. You, you definitely mm -hmm. can. And these are people sometimes who have their own kids, but they can't imagine having a room full of kids. And I'm telling you right now, if you walk into a classroom on day one, <clears throat> and you set the tone the right way. Maybe you're a little tough. You kind of loosen your grip a little as you go, but they know when you want things fixed a certain way, boom, you fix it. And then when it's time to just chill out and talk and how was your weekend and oh, what's up, man, and have fun, they will do anything for you. Honestly, these, mm -hmm. like my class this year in particular, those kids, I would trust them with anything at this point. And people probably think that's crazy. Oh, they're 10, 11 year old. They can't be trusted. I'm telling you right now, I could say anything in that class. And those kids, if I ask them, hey, this is personal to me, please keep this between us. They'll keep it between us. Like if they mm -hmm. like you and they respect you, I'd say those two things have to go hand in hand, right? It can't just be that they like you. They think you're cool because if they don't respect you, they'll walk all over you. And mm -hmm. if they respect you, but they don't like you at all, then they don't really care what you have to say. They're not interested in it. You know, yeah. if you can find that balance, which I think a lot of guys are capable of doing that then the kids will do anything for you, honestly. Well, and I'll tell you this. Uh, I've got, <laughs> this is not the same experience, but I've sure, got sure. some experience as, as a father of three. I've, I've, you know, been involved in all three of my children's lives in their right. upbringing. I've attended many birthday parties, many birthday <laughs> parties that needed to be kept on track for purposes of time sure. or whatever the case may be. I'll tell you one thing for, for men that where I think that that's probably a challenge for a lot of men and where you're maybe even discounting your own 
um, specialness or, or whatever. It's something that, that, you know, that you actually um, excelled at, which is understanding that you have to build that trust in that respect. Right. And so right. I remember like I've had birthday parties where I tried to come in as like this, put my foot <laughs> down, let the, and there, oh, they couldn't care less. <laughs> But, you know, over time as a father, I, I started to learn that if I built their trust, hey, you know, got to know their names, actually showed that I care about them, sure. listened to them. You know, they wanted to talk about their favorite new video game or their favorite new cartoon, you know, actually getting to their level and listening. Then when the time came to say, hey, everybody bring it together, we got stuff to do. Right. Then they would listen. I think a lot of guys are intimidated because when they've tried to wrangle kids, yeah. it hasn't immediately it doesn't, gone. Yeah. Like, kids don't <laughs> just immediately respect your authority no. because you say, hey, I'm the authority figure. Like, right, right. No, it takes some work and some effort and some time. But once you do build it, that's kind oh, of where you're getting at. Yeah, I, I totally 100%. And, and it's it's funny in, in life in general, when I just, you know, whether you go to, like you said, a birthday party or uh, my son has like baseball game or whatever, it's, int I have to, it's hard for me to separate the teacher part of my brain from what's going on in front of me because sometimes I think, well, why not just do it this way or say this? And I'm like, oh, Rudy, hold on. Shh. We're in the real world. It's okay. Just let them handle it. But <laughs> I, I do see ways where, and it's, it's not these people's fault. Obviously you can't expect everyone to have like this classroom management of a bunch of kids perfectly. That's not a real thing. You learn that as you go in the field, obviously. Um, but I have met a lot of fathers and mothers who just seem to have this sort of way about them where they do understand, like, it's not, you're going to respect me because I'm an adult right away. It's like, yeah, you want that to be true, but you have to kind of present it in a little bit of a different way. And the kids will usually latch right onto that, you know? I, I think and, kids kids almost more so than than adults. It, it's one of the things that they're actually maybe better at. They can tell when it's, you know, foot down for the sake of foot down, or if yep. it's, you know, somebody who's genuinely caring. And I, I don't know. I just, I feel like kids have that sixth sense. Yeah. Um, almost on picking up and on if somebody actually gives a crap about them or if they're just, you know, trying to put their foot down for the sake of ego. And, and I think that's yeah. what a lot of guys struggle with and why men maybe won't go into a field like that. Sure. Um, sure. Is because of kids. Kids will tear down your ego very Oh, quickly. yeah. <laughs> I mean, man. you can probably speak to that. Oh, man. I can't. I can't. I can't tell you. I, obviously, now, you know, my skin is thick enough where it's okay. It doesn't bother yeah. me anymore. But I'll say when I first started, there were a few things the kids would say, and I'd think about it and be like, what'd you mean by that earlier, John? Yes. <laughs> you know, you come back a little later, like, hold on a second, why'd you say that? No, even my own kids will come up and be like, Dad, you're getting fat. Or, or, Daddy, what's going on with your belly? Like kids will tear down your ego. Oh <laughs> man, they have they have no problem, man. But you're you're totally right. But it's like you gotta be willing to let your guard down a little bit, even with you, and I'm sure you know this with your own kids, is like no matter what age they are. You don't have to be like so defensive and wall up when they want to joke around with you back or when they want to make a little comment back to you. Like, it's OK. You know, once once you let it see that it bothers you or bugs you, obviously, it's all better off. Right. Like they <laughs> they'll run with that. So And and I do. I, I think more men, if you're out there listening, um, you know, follow Rudy's example and. Um, if it's something that you've ever been interested in, you're not go interact with with kids um, and, and maybe join a field like that or become sure. a big brother or a mentor. I do also think I, I was hesitant to even bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up. Go I do it. think that there's a stigma against men. And like, I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a very unearned, um, stigma, but in yeah. general, like a, a man in a group of children just sure. seems a little sure. bit more foreign to people than oh, yeah. you know, a, a woman. Uh, with a group of children is that something that you've run into as well oh yeah I, i'm actually glad you brought that up because didn't, i didn't even think about it but yes so yeah what people have to understand is that myself in this field these kids are 10 11 12 years old right so for whatever reason i think it might just be because um i had my daughter first and that was the only kid i had for you know um let's say five years before i even had my son i just became so close with her and the way she is and the way she does things that when I got into that field, uh, the actual teaching job, I was always so close with so many of the girls. I would get along fine with the boys. We were cool. No problem. But the girls and I, we always had like a really strong connection by the end of the year, every year. And, you know, it became very regular 
like a very commonplace thing for, oh, hi, Mr. Regalado, I missed you. Give me a hug. Or they come, they want to, um, you know, whatever it is. There's always so getting close to you, whatever. And if any other teacher does this, it's no big deal. And yeah. for myself, no one has said anything to me or anything, but it does Even cross my mind. Is there that, 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 yeah, sometimes yeah, I think like, of it like, yeah. I'm not doing anything wrong here. I'm just showing love to these kids, which I love them, right? But I think just just in society, it's kind of made you kind of like think of that, you know, and how and that's where I want society that. to start to read. That's where I want these conversations to happen and for society to rethink these things, because yeah. we say one thing, but then demonstrate another. We want more men to step up. We want men right. to be loving and affectionate and kind. But sure. then we we give these kinds of, um, uh, right. you know, signals that a, a man like, oh, that's something to raise your eyebrow. At. Sure, sure, sure. Um, a man being affectionate um you know with uh, with a child or with a little girl or a little boy right. in general and it's like you can't have your cake and eat it too we can either know, get <laughs> you know? it's totally it's one not or the fair. other <laughs> yeah it's it's totally not fair and again it's not like you know someone's coming hey don't do that right but you just kind of notice sometimes little comments here and there or little looks and stuff but honestly i don't let it stop me because it's not fair to these kids who have built this connection with me for me to hold withhold that from them when they crave that. And, and we're not doing anything wrong. Right. And so why should I care what these other people have to say when this girl who has no dad at home, who's, who looks forward to coming to school every day and seeing her male teacher, why should I keep that away from her over something? Well, I, I do want to point out as I, as I do to a lot of my guests who tend to minimize their own actions, what you, I, I love, how you put that. And I love that you do that. I also want to point out and acknowledge to you how courageous and different you actually are. Oh, okay. I, I can't tell you the number of, I can't tell you the number of guests that I've had who don't acknowledge or, you know, because you're just <laughs> doing you, you're just being sure, you every sure. day. Right. Sure. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm the person who comes out and points out to you that no, you're extraordinary actually, because there are a lot of men who are shying away from that which is why we have sure. a lack of of male presence in certain fields um yeah, yeah, yeah and in the home in general and so um so for you i wanted to say thank you for being being a man and and in my opinion what that means for me is stepping up and taking responsibility and and saying i'm gonna do what nobody else seems to be willing to do sure Sure. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, will be damned. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you as, as a young man as well, who didn't have a father figure for a lot of my life growing up. Right. Um, you know, I loved the male figures that I had in education. And so that was one of the uh, final points. I know we've got to keep you on time. I'll get you out of here on time. Don't worry. Oh, don't worry. I got um, till eight. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, kind of go back to that, uh, as, as far as, what are you seeing from the children? Is there a lack? Well, I, I think we both acknowledge that the answer is yes. What effect are you seeing of the lack of positive male role models in children's lives as a teacher, um, sure. whether it's with little boys or little girls? Because it seems like they're craving it. That's what you're saying. Yeah. What yeah. effect is that having on them, that lack of positive male fatherly kind of role sure. models? Sure. So, so before they answer the question, just an, an anecdote that I thought of uh, in relation to this is I had a talk with my wife, maybe like, I don't know, a few weeks ago or something about like, what do you think it would be like? We were talking about like fathers and mothers. So what do you think it would be like, honestly, if I wasn't here with our kids? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you think it would go? And she's like, well, you know, I think I, I could raise them, but it would be tough. You know, it'd be hard or whatever. I'm like, I understand that. But like, truly think about what goes on between myself and my kids and you as well. Right. But think about our interactions, right? Like my dad, for example, didn't, you know, my dad is great, but he didn't, he wasn't affectionate with me. He didn't hug me and say, I love you every day and all this stuff. Right. Was he just like the general, like provider kind of archetype. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Move over your head. Shut the fuck yep, up. <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. Right. So, yeah, and yeah. my mom, my mom was the, the other side. Right. Which even a lot of kids don't even have that as even a father. Have that, <laughs> even have that. So with my own kids, I like really try to go out of my way to hugging, kissing, saying, I love you, you know, just talking. And I, I see the effect it has on them. They, they are more confident. They have more self-esteem and they love talking to their dad and catching up. It could be anything, something silly, something funny, something serious, whatever. So that being said, in school, I see... I see that when they do have like a stable um, 
you know, home life. I, I do see them come in, be very confident in what they say and how they feel. And by stable home life, you mean uh, an involved and emotionally supportive yeah. mother and father. Yeah, that's what I would say for the most part. Um, there are so many cases where I see like um, either one of the two parents are missing or um, maybe they've been, uh, there's even been foster, fostering, which we fostering is great. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it's tough for the kid to be moving around so much and they don't have like, you know, a stable um, home life. And, and I see that manifest itself in school in so many ways, right? Let's start with the girls. There are many girls who I can tell that they are very, um, they're very lacking in their self-esteem. Many look like as a girl in general, a young girl. Yeah. You know, comments people make will probably hit you harder than maybe a boy. Right. But mm -hmm. It seems to be there's certain kids who I feel like it really just ruins their whole day. It tears them down. They can't do anything, right? They, um, whether it's something about what they're wearing or how they look or it could be anything simple. It, there's even a girl who was upset because people are saying that she's older than the rest of them and she's going to be done with school before them. You know, it's just a lot. I think it's way more sensitivity, you know, when, mm -hmm. when I see and I make the connection. Well, I know this about their parents and such, right? Um, when it comes to the boys, one huge thing that I've dealt with a few times over the years is they don't know how to interact with a girl. Like they, mm. and I, I don't even mean, I don't even mean in terms of like dating. I mean, just to be like respectful of the other sex, you know, mm -hmm. um, to understand that there are yeah. like differences in how you uh, play, exactly. you don't know, just go up and pop All them upside that. the head. Like you do your, your little <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, I even, I've even seen a boy one time he got upset with a girl. She kept like stepping on his shoes. So he like, boom, like whacked her, like slapped her. I'm like, listen, you can't, you can't do that. You got to think about this. Like there's a way to go about it. You know, it's your boy. I'm not saying it's right to hit your boy either, but you guys have. It is a little bit more normalized. There are differences. Right, right. Yeah, and totally, there's that. totally differences. And so those are two big things I noticed. Um, but, but on the other thing with the boys, I'd say is um, I've had boys who just, they don't get that attention at home. And so from either one of us, because, you know, it's mostly partner teachers, like, you know, one teaches math, one teaches English. So is that a new thing? I, I don't remember so, partner teachers for me. Growing yeah. Up. So when I was when I was a kid, it wasn't it wasn't like that. But many oh schools God. now are doing like the um, one teacher teaches one to two subjects, the other teaches the other. So in my particular case, I teach math and science and my partner teaches um, reading and writing and social studies. And we switch classes interesting the day mm -hmm. and so, so you get a break while your partner teaches and vice versa well not necessarily a break we just switch classes right i'll like do it again so for oh, example okay. My oh okay class, gotcha, gotcha. we'll have lunch switch i see the oh. afternoon class yeah which is you're right it is very different than <laughs> than we were younger um, yeah and also i think it's a difference in uh because you're back east and i'm in texas so i don't, I don't know if it's the that's same true, that's true yeah. a state thing as well that's true um but yeah, I, I, those are the main examples. But but there's one last thing. Like some of the boys, sometimes I notice will crave attention from um, from the female teacher because maybe they're not getting that attention from their father, and they want to seek it in their mother in their mother figure at work or excuse me at mm -hmm. school. You know, so I definitely see it. Definitely is something that's present and obvious. You know, yeah. in certain cases. So and so you know, you're an involved father and i love that but you're also a father figure to um to these children you know whose lives you're involved in and i again am so thankful for for guys like you and and what you do you. um and want to make sure that you understand how you know appreciated you are by so many people out there um what advice would you give as that father figure to the parents of children who are lacking who are lacking that and so to to expand a little bit it's something that i want to discuss even even more on this channel but i have had experience in the dating world for the past couple of years sure and um one of the things that i've noticed is there are a lot of so mothers are y'all are killing it don't want to put mothers down there are so many single mothers out there trying to do the work of both the mother and the father sure. because the father isn't involved. And again, this is on men to, to step our shit up. Of course. Um, that said, you know, there are mothers out there who I know would love a father figure or a male figure in their child's life because the right. father isn't involved. 
Right. What right. advice would you have to them as far as seeking out that figure? Because for me, I've unfortunately found that there are a lot of women out there seeking a father figure for their child strictly through the lens of dating. They're trying to find right, right. The, the new father figure through the lens of dating. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily not a way to go about it. There are a lot of great stepdads out there who are stepping it up and, and sure. doing a wonderful job. And, and we appreciate them as well. But there are options out there to find a, a father figure in your child's life that doesn't require a romantic relationship between you and, and the guy, uh, of course, of course. somebody like you. And, and I think there are other options out there. What advice would you have for, you know, parents of children who are lacking, you know, that, that other side of the parenting kind of coin? Sure. So I guess in terms of, if we're talking strictly, like not finding that through the lens of dating. Right. But I will well, say, I, I think that's where everybody's first go-to is. That's the, that's the go-to, of course. <laughs> but I will say, you know, of course, I'll I'll mention something that's outside of that. But if you are doing it that way, which many are, I'd say, and again, this is coming from someone who has not been single in a long time. So please take my advice with a grain of salt. But <laughs> I feel like if that was me and let's say, you know, I, I split up with my wife and I was looking for a new relationship and I have my kids, I would probably try to build the relationship first before even my kids are in the picture at all. You know, because I feel mm -hmm. like that's more genuine. I feel like if you say off the bat, not, not that you're hiding, you're, not that you're saying you don't have kids. You're not going to say that. But I'm saying if you introduce the kids so early, I feel like sometimes people get scared off or they have this different idea of the relationship. Oh, well, now I'm just a stepdad or a stepmom, whatever, right? I feel like if you build that first, then when the kids come in, then it's like more natural. It's like, okay, they're here for the long haul, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that aside, let's say you're trying to find a different way. So one thing that I've had success with um, on the opposite end, being the father figure to the kid of the parent who maybe both parents are not there. Um, so I've been, I've been tutoring on like my off time, you know, in the summer I'll tutor a lot, um, you know, throughout the school year here and there. And I find that just random people will call me. Like I place like an ad on Google or whatever. Right. And people will call me, Hey, I'm looking for a tutor for this, for that. So I have a, I have a few kids who, one of them in particular, um, you can tell the girl really loves talking to like a male, a, a, an older male. She really enjoys it. She learns well. She likes joking around with me. Um, she asks me questions about being a teacher, whatever it is, you know? And I feel like we've come so far and I've seen her go from like a shy, quiet, um, very unconfident kid to like this. She's like blossomed, you know? And I know that's a very particular, you know, situation, but I don't know. Maybe there could be other things similar to tutors. It doesn't have to be a tutor, right? Maybe just, I don't know. I don't know what other avenues you get to get someone to come through I, well I do well if you don't mind me jumping in yeah, yeah, go, I, I go. do feel like um you know the, the reason why I brought this up is this something that I've been wanting to to discuss on the show and you're the first uh you know dude that I've had on where I can really point to as an example of for women out there I, you know I'm just gonna go ahead and say it for women out there if you are a mother of a young child who needs a male role model or a male influence in their lives, this is where you can find it without all of the baggage or nonsense sure. that comes in the dating world and all of those expectations. There are angels out there. This dude is an angel over here who I'm pointing at. You, man. He is. He's an angel on earth. He is out there ready to guide and mentor your children. It's not just the the male teachers, their coaches, their mentors, their yeah, pastors, their um, big brothers and big sisters. Yep. Like get your kid in sports, explain, go out there and explain to the coach. That coach is there specifically right. to guide these children. They're doing it nine times out of 10 as a volunteer. If we're talking about yeah, that's true. You know, below uh, adult, for, if we're talking about actual children, they're 90% of the time doing it as volunteers because they care. Go yeah. to them. These are the guys. They are literal angels on earth. You need to go to them and explain to them, you know, that's hey, a great point. This yeah. is what my child has been through. The dad isn't involved, doesn't have this, needs this. If you do that, I guarantee you, if you explain yeah. shit like that to somebody like Rudy, um, they're going to step up and then be like, all right, yeah. I got you. That's yeah, no. why they do what they do. You know what? I, I, of all the options, I, 
didn't even think of it. Man, there's so many options out there. You're right. And and if someone did approach me in that way and they told me their story, I feel like I would be even more inclined to try my best to help this kid, pull this kid out of the rut that they're in or whatever they're dealing with. You know? Yeah, you're absolutely I would right. imagine that a lot of times you're learning it from the kids through, through oh, their, yeah. but how much more would you dive into that if you had a parent, a, a mother, for example, a single mom who came up and said, hey, look, Rudy, you know, she hasn't had a dad or he hasn't had a dad in their life since they were born. Sure. And I'm having trouble with ABC at home. <clears throat> you, you would be all over that. I, I oh, know yeah. you. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, honestly, I'm not just saying it to say it's the truth. Like it's, listen, of course, everyone works their job for money. We all know. Yeah, you need money to survive. I get it, right? But I can't tell you how many times just because I really care about these kids um, that I've just taken my own time to do things, even to the point where I probably annoy my wife because I'm doing it too much. You know, there's been times where She's I'm like, sitting there. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> there's been times where we're watching TV. We're laying on the couch, relaxing. I have this program on my phone, this app on my phone called class dojo. What it yeah. is, is it's basically at the beginning of the year, you put the code out there. <clears throat> Any parents that want to communicate with me as, as your your child's teacher throughout the year, please download this app, add me here, and you can just instant message back and forth. I can post updates. Hey, uh, today we're doing this. Please don't forget this tomorrow, whatever it is, right? And I have it on my phone. A lot of teachers keep it just on their computer at work. And when they leave, that's that. I have the thing on my phone, you know? So I'm like always on it. Like parent message me, hey, uh, tomorrow, can you make sure John uh, takes this home with him tomorrow? No problem. 8.30 night. No problem. I'll let them know tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Said, what are you doing on your phone? So <laughs> there's been, there's been times Maybe where. that teacher. Cause I'm, yeah. the, I'm the parent who's getting emails from the teacher. like, what the fuck? Stop emailing. <laughs> oh man. And you know what? I, the, the whole email thing. I know that that's the way that teachers are supposed to operate. But for me, I just like a more personal touch. You know, no, when, I you, love that. when you message me at nine o'clock at night, uh, concerned about something, I'm going to hit you back up right away. Yeah, that's yeah. how I usually do it. You know? I'll tell you so, more the emails now. If I get a call or anything, then I'm I on mean, it. But. Yeah, of course. That's different. But no, I've had times where I'll get up. Uh, hold on. Uh, pause, the, pause the TV. I got to – this girl's doing her homework. She doesn't understand. Let me see, get on the video cam with her and help oh, her out. So you. I'll sit oh, there yeah. with her. There was a girl last year who I sat and I, man, and I didn't do this for this reason, but I was so happy that there's people out there who do recognize the things that you do because I didn't even think about it. I just jumped on with her. I'm helping her learn how to add fractions or something like that walking her through it, having her do examples on the computer. It was like an hour and I, I signed off next morning. I go, I get an email from like the superintendent or something. She's like, Oh, well she sent it to the whole school. I want to give a shout out to, to Rudy for, you know, his mom, the student's mom called and said, he sat on the computer with her for an hour, helping her on a weekday. Well, I was like, Oh, that's so cool. You know, it's like, it's, it's a good feeling when that stuff comes back to you, you know? So I don't and know. That, man. That's, I where, like that's where I was getting at earlier where, where again, I said, um, ladies and gentlemen out there, um, especially single moms, y'all are killing it. I know that there are a lot of dudes who aren't stepping it up. This is sure. my attempt to fix that. This is, um, you know, our attempt to fix that. We're, we're trying to get dudes to step it up. But for those of you out there who don't have a man in your child's life, stepping it up, boom, this is what I'm talking about. There are sure. angels out there. There are men out there trying to do the work, um, sure. but you, it, they can only help the ones who, who come to them uh, yeah. for that. And so yeah, 100%. seek them out. And so that's why I wanted to ask that. So before I let you go, I am going to let you go here in a little bit. I'm going to respect okay. everybody's time. I, I definitely want to have you back on. Oh, anytime, um, man. But uh, there, there were a, a couple of last or, or few questions that I had. Um, one, sure. I'll go ahead and end it on. Tell everybody about what you've got going on in your own um, personal projects. You, you have sure. a, your own podcast. Right. Show. What do you call it? Podcast show? Yeah, it's, I don't, it's, I don't a, it's a podcast. Yeah. Right. Um, it's a it's a video game podcast mainly, but we talk about movies and TV. And, you know, we've had a bunch of the people, honestly, that are in John and I's like Facebook circle, let's say, <laughs> have been on with us. They've mm -hmm. talked about things as, uh, you know, our, the one guy, Mario, you know him, right? He's in our. Oh, case, yeah. Right? I love Mario. Yeah. Mario came on. He talked to us about black holes and studying them and his research. Yeah, I was pretty lost. Like, theoretical physicist. Oh, my God. The dude is like. We met super through video smart. games. You're out there yeah. and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. video games bullshit. <laughs> I know a theoretical physicist. There you go. <laughs> and 
<laughs> it's so it's so cool because the whole t- first of all, I'm a math teacher. I love math. I'm very passionate about math. I've always been really great with math. So talking to this guy, it's like I was talking to like a celebrity. I was like, oh no, my god, this is so like cool. Math. Yeah, it's a, oh it's man, a man. Yeah, we had we had Jesse really do fucking fractions. <laughs> we had Jesse come on and talk about all about beer. I don't know the first thing about beer. I just I know John and Jesse are the only two guys I know who know that much about beer. All I know is if I say I drink um, Coors Light, Jesse gets annoyed at me. So I just say it all the time. Okay? Honestly, just that, that was like a little I, dagger. Yeah, it hurts you, right? <laughs> I don't even I don't even barely drink beer, but I just think it was so fascinating to talk to him and then him recommend me try this beer. If you like this, try this. It was like he was diagnosing me like. Well, what do you like? I like this. Well, what he what's a good flavor? He was literally a doctorate of beer yet. Like if they did, Jesse would qualify for no, a he, of beer. I tried a beer out that he recommended to me. I was like, this is so cool that I, I got a new beer that I like based off this podcast that I did, you know? So yeah. so yeah, so it's called the Inside Bite. It's on all podcast platforms. Um, you know, we it's it's really enjoyable. I really like doing it every week, you know. It's um and besides that, man, just in these groups, just chatting about video games, movies, TV. That's about it, man. And other life things, you know? Wonderful. And then last question for you. I know you probably weren't prepared for this one, um, right, but man. you were instrumental it. in the decision to grow this glorious thing. Ah, uh, yes. Did, yes. Why? Why did you encourage this? <laughs> why is the beard so important for- Oh, uh, man. Where do I start? <laughs> Listen, I spent maybe, let me see. My daughter was born when I was 24, 25. I probably spent about 26, 27 years of my life never growing a beard. I just, I just never thought that it would happen. Um, I would get like a chin strap or I get yeah. the, the stash and the goatee. That, um, that was my thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I had, and and listen, it, looked, it looked cool. It looked fine. Back in the day when I had my nice, you know, skin fade going on, you know, before yeah. I'm bald now, you know, I used to do the, the fade, the stash, whatever. Right. It was all great. No problem. Look good. But one day I was just like, you know what? Let me try to just grow this out. And and you start off, of course, you got to go through the awkward phase, right? It's all patchy. It's all messed up. I don't have a shape up right now, so it's not perfect. But usually they line it up real nice for me. Um, but, man, I don't know what it is. It's just it's something about having your beer. You're in the car. You're combing. You're brushing it. You put the oil in. You, you were the first out. one to, to talk to me about, like, the actual care. The like manicure. The yeah, yeah, yeah. And the palm <laughs> and the this and the that. And I remember being like, that sounds like a lot of work. And I remember being, <laughs> being like caught off guard by that. And you were one of the first voices to kind of encourage it. And now I love it. Literally, I wish I I'm could. Glad. Point I'm the so camera. glad. I've got a whole drawer. You got a whole set. <laughs> dedicated it's on my desk right here. I've got a that's whole drawer. Awesome. That's awesome. I've got my oil, my balm, my conditioner. Oh, I've got my it. brush, my that. trimmer. <laughs> that's amazing. I love <laughs> that. Yeah. It, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's like. It's like a comfort thing now. I love the way that I, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying I'm some Rico Suave out here. It just feels right. It feels like this is my face and this is how it's always got to be. And that's how it's always been, you know? How do you determine length? That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Like, I don't know if I want to um, go for more length or. So if I look at the side, it kind of, you know, I don't know. That's at least like a few inches probably. I kind of like it going down the sides and then over here. It's like not super thick, but when they line it up, mm-hmm. it looks it looks pretty. It's crazy what these barbers can do, as as I'm sure you know. They can they can make oh, it look yeah. so full, so nice. Oh yeah, and they got um, that, that stuff that they can spray. Oh, in there like, the spray, you know, yeah, all that all that good stuff. Yep, That's new. Yep. Yeah. I, oh I was, yeah. That was crazy but, the first time I saw. But it. I, I think even the way you have it, where it's like closer to your face, I think it looks good. It just depends on you know what your preference is. Have you? What's your plan right now? Have you been cutting it down, or are you just letting it go? No, so I'm actually trying to get it, uh, get the volume up, but oh, I've been okay, yep. trimming down like yep. to make it. I want it to grow hairs. full all yep. at once, and like there was a lot of stragglers that I trimmed off. Sure, sure. And so it's gonna take a little bit because I let shaved. It keep going, it. man. Yeah, let it keep let going. It keep I'm, going. I'm telling you, there's. I don't know. Be I'm thinking about going for the full on like Kratos. Yeah, man, beer. Go. Like, <laughs> Dude, oh man, that would be. I always start getting like in the summertime. I start getting farther and farther, and then one day I'm always cut it. But one day I'm just gonna let it keep going, man. Why not? Dude, that was um, me with up here because I was growing out my curls, and yeah. then I started to realize that I was sweating because it's fucking hot out here. Oh here. yeah, I want to get rid of that. The beard doesn't oh, cause so that much. Funny. You know what? In the in the winter though, it's real nice. Your face is nice and warm usually. You know, keep it in there. But yeah, I say keep going. It's gonna be like a little awkward face for most people. Just keep pushing through it. Doesn't matter. It'll it'll eventually. What I do is like I, when I got to that point, I'd let it grow a little bit. It'd look a little funny. I'd get like a shape up, keep it going, 
get a shape up. Don't even cut it down. I wouldn't do. I would just keep lining it up, make it look good. Right. Some stragglers. Rudy, Rudy would never say this because he is a very kind and uncontroversial <laughs> person. Um, <laughs> if you don't have a beard, you are not a man. Ah. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm jumping on with John on this one. No, get that beard. Let's go. <laughs> no, I, I love everybody. Thank you so much, Rudy. I, I love uh, our conversation. This was was such a fun time. Um, I had a, I had a blast. I had a blast. And listen, be, before we go, thank you for for doing this. This is a cool, different. I see so many podcasts are so samey. I love the the output. I love the different guests. I try to watch here and there when I can, and I think it's great. So I think keep it up, man. And uh, yeah, anytime, man. I'd love to come back sometime. So absolutely. Well, I appreciate your support. You've been um, supporting me from the very beginning. I appreciate you joining me. I know everybody out there uh, who listens is going to find a lot of value in, in everything you had to add. And absolutely, I will so. have you back on um, very soon, hopefully. Uh, and you actually, you have me on your show too. Damn it. I, yes, would like I will let you know. Talk about myself someday. <laughs> I would love that. I, I would be fantastic, man. So we'll, we'll make it work. All right. Awesome. For everybody else out there, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you could and you agree with my mission to help improve the conversation around mental health with a particular focus on men in today's society, I would appreciate your support. That support can be as simple as a like, a subscribe, or some of the other ways that I put in the description. Um, again, thank you so, so much to my guest, Rudy. Uh, go check out the links My to pleasure. his output and some of his information in the description. And then I'll see you all next time. See you guys later.